But if we're ready. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we're all here. Okay. I guess. Uh, so I am pleased to announce that the election for civilian oversight board has concluded. Mm -hmm. uh, I know we talked about uh, how we're going to take the top eight and then select four. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll read out the top eight and let's see what you guys think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in order uh, from highest votes to least votes out of the top eight, we got Archie Archer, no surprise, with 140. That guy's literally addicted to the civilian oversight board. Mm -hmm. uh, Sonny Brooks, 129. Ursula Lackenberg, 114. Owen Spenson, 83. Uh, Silas Moreno, <laughs> 79. TJ Walker, 78. First Temple, 73. Jalapeno, 65. And then it, you know, it roughly just trails off from there. These civilians who are clean and not government employees mm -hmm. uh, and having Malton kind of, you know, take them under his wing and, you know, create this, this board. Uh, and I guess my question is, is knowing that we are going to publish the voting results in full, I, I, I would question this the following way. Is there anything in the top eight that makes us want to supersede the voting will of the public? Even if, uh, things are resolved and even if things are resolved to a way where the public would be happy... It was never really public. Uh, and the reason is that obviously, you know, PD doesn't want to air its dirty laundry, and that's just natural. Uh, but if you have a public-facing civilian oversight board, then the whole intent is to air the dirty laundry uh, and allow the public to feel like they have representatives who are looking into these things on their behalf. Um, so I wasn't really, you know, and, and maybe, you know, this was the wrong approach, but personally, I didn't really want people... Uh, I guess focused exactly on the uh, the thing. I just wanted clean civilians who weren't with a government job, who wanted mm -hmm. to serve and help because we can teach them what they're doing and we can instruct them on how to do it. That's Mon's job. Um, but you know, right. I, I don't necessarily want people who are out there to, who hate PD. I want just <laughs> genuine civilians who have an open mind. I, and I guess this is just my natural instinct. I don't have a an inherent bias against anyone in the top four that would make me say they can't be on the board so my thought was well instead of like superseding the will of the people why don't we interview the top four explain to them exactly the the constraints and if if you know See if it seems like they can follow it. through and they still uh, want to do it then we you know give it a go because i I'm personally i don't want to be seen as you know you know meddling yeah so much i i, I, I agree yeah, I agree with uh, not overriding the popular vote. I think that's a terrible idea. I, Why risk the psychological guilt of the officers? Just let Bobby and Carmine take that burn. Yeah, and oh unless, unless you're all wanting to, to stall it up and uh, build a basement in the PD to execute people in, uh, then yeah, it's just all DOC's problem. I'm still open to talking about it more if you've got thoughts, Siobhan, but... Uh... Yeah, but there you go. We got we got another yeah, idea yeah, I, at I least on the table. It just, I just yeah. think it's a logistical nightmare to be getting uh, the execution squad into PD. Uh, or, Admittedly, sorry, into we probably couldn't do it in the prison. Yeah, that yeah. Is very true. <clears throat> so we'll keep that in mind. So, you, what what are your thoughts on a <clears throat> death coliseum? <laughs> did the uh, did the trial by combat stuff ever get uh, clarified? That we talked about, like, kinda, the kinda, first or the second session. You mean the... It's, it's not trial by combat. It's, it's not trial by combat, sorry. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the death. death. Yes, yeah. the, death matches. The 100% fatality, one man yeah. enters, one man leaves, death because pact. This, this seems <laughs> yes. in a similar vein to this, is why I'm asking. Not really. Um, this, no, 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 no. This, uh, the, yeah, no, this, this is for this people who have already been condemned yeah. to, like, death row, have already been given the death penalty in a court so of they're ball. dying no matter what. Whereas the, the, <laughs> whereas the death duel was more a, uh, a way for people who aren't necessarily in trouble with the law to settle a dispute with fatalities. Mm. And isn't it just their discretion either way? So maybe just put out a guidance that, like, hey, this, this is okay. This kind of stuff is okay now, or we're, we're trying it out? Green, it was like, what are you I mean, doing? I can just talk to the judges and say, hey, guys, the council wants us to give this a shot. Give it a shot. This being the uh, the act that we're talking about? We'll just 
Just no contact orders in no general? No contact orders in general. Because what I'm saying is, is that the judge is going to issue the order. So yeah. I'm saying I think the, the legislation doesn't really do anything because the judge is going to issue it and the judge is going to contextualize it and the punishment is the court order. So it's all contained within the judge's discretion. So I could just take this, send it to him and just say, hey, this is what the council came up with. I told them that if we're the ones that are going to enforce it, it's going to be enforced through court order that you guys just use your discretion. So I know in, in the past we haven't really done no contact, but, you know, if you feel this is a good solution for a case, feel free to use it. How would somebody request a no contact order, though? I mean, the only time we really do them is uh, is currently we do them like on like, so say you're on bail and you're accused of, like, trying to murder somebody, we already do, like, no contact orders for, like, yeah, like, hey, you tried to kill, you know, Siobhan Thoroughbred, you're not allowed to, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, and go, uh, this person's harassing me, make them leave me alone. Okay, so fine. if that's what you want the judges to start entertaining, I can give guidance on that. But if it's, if it's the idea of no contact orders for existing, like, criminal cases or you know existing disputes that are on record that are being adjudicated we already do that i think people uh, should be able to come in and request no contact orders and let a judge decide if it's valid or not okay uh, i'll uh, give that guidance to the judges i'll tell them to start being open to that i mean is there anyone here who thinks like that the people shouldn't be able to request those just ad hoc uh <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my concern would be, uh, just whining from judges about having to do something like that, I guess, but I don't really know a lot of them personally. Okay. So as to what you said about, you know, <laughs> you attempted to murder me, um, that's what the next one is, <clears throat> the Dan protocol. Uh, I will admit that I am incredibly biased when I wrote this and, um, was probably not in the best mindset. Hmm. <clears throat> I talked I talk to you a little bit about this before and you <laughs> said when they you know your response when I said that they were harassing stalking and attacking me was to just shoot them so that's what that, that's how this was oh, born oh yeah my God. If, if they're aggressing on you then yeah defend yourself but not a KOS specifically also because not all Dan's are bad in fact we have a judge that is a Dan he's a fan well, she's right still an offshoot uh, I have started to review the penal code if we're not doing any major topics and uh wow it's gonna be a lot of work uh there's I, I thought I had purged everything that wasn't relevant anymore but there's still stuff in there that I don't know why it's there uh there's also a pretty big gap between uh, the old charges and the new charges in terms of fines. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm probably going to have to go through and rebalance everything. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm going to do is kind of like a mix of qualitative and quantitative where I'm going to try to uh, get an average of all felonies and then get an average of all misdemeanors and then plug in some data in a spreadsheet where uh, a formula tells me the proportionality of each charge compared to the average. And then that'll probably give me an idea of, you know, where the distinctions lie within each subcategory so uh all that said i'm working on it i don't have anything to present um but i wanted to feel something out a little bit um something was proposed to me that seemed like a cool idea at first but i think the potential um steps that would need to be taken might not be worth it all uh was scheduling drugs to kind of future proof things Ooh. oh oh I love that I, idea. Yeah, I'd be happy to help. Uh, what do you mean, like assigning out. them dates or what? Um, essentially, like uh, classifying of their having, power classifying level. The, yeah, classifying yes. their schedule, uh, and then, mm -hmm. then having the charges just be for like schedule one, schedule two, or schedule three drugs, misdemeanor Pretty or much, like felony yes. possessions, rather than individual charges for each drug. It would just be exactly. based on the drug schedule. Because I, I looked into yes. it, and a lot of the crimes of and fines are very similar for possession charges. Um, depending, like, what kind of drug it is. The only thing that I realized might make this kind of complicated is that it does need to be written out exactly what a felony or mystery, misdemeanor amount is for each thing. We could put that in the legislation um, so it can be referred to uh, instead of needing to have an individual. Some of them are already here. So you'd be open to that? Uh, Nakoda. Like it's easier. I'm yeah, on here. Think, Dakota? 
do you think your Neanderthal comrades are capable of uh, <laughs> doing something more complicated than punching in the name of the drug and checking how much of it they have, and then punching in the name of the drug again and seeing which one they pick? You mean, can they differentiate class of drug? Yeah, do you think that it's feasible for during processing them to differentiate the class, then refer to the legislation, which ostensibly would do in a different place regarding the uh, amounts for felony or misdemeanor within that class, and then use those charges appropriately? I would hope so. That's not very confident. Oh, boy. <laughs> that was... That was my worry. Like, we still have it all written down somewhere. It's not like they'd have to, you know, make it up, but it would just be in a slightly different place. But the the idea behind it is this would future-proof things, so it should make things easier, mm -hmm. uh, ideally. Right. Because then if a new drug hits the streets, mm -hmm. then, you know, once yeah, it's classified, then up. you just throw it onto the list. and We don't it, need, like, a you know, hundred different chargers for different for drugs. Right. Yeah. Felony amounts of every single drug, which I, is salt mm -hmm. I mean, I, I agree with general categorization, but this isn't future-proofing anything. There's no difference between adding a new charge and modifying a charge to add something to the list unless you plan on listing every drug out. In the schedule, yeah. In the schedule. I mean, you'd have to add them in just the I'm one place the schedule I, rather I, than two places for the charges. That's I, all. I, uh, I'm, I'm against that part specifically. I don't think we should be scared preemptively scheduling uh the narcotic oh, no, of not like pre cocaine or meth or no no not preemptively like no, no 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 the um the the idea is that they would be they would go through a process involving uh you know like uh, scientific testing and stuff oh uh, through the hospital and all that to figure out what schedule it belongs in uh when we find out you know it's a thing I just don't think it's you're you're not future proofing anything. Like I what's what's if, if we're just like wanting to say like this is a schedule one narcotic just for again logistics, that I think that's fine. That's something worth discussing. But th this isn't future proofing shit. There is no difference between testing a drug and then in court saying, Okay, we need a new charge and then testing a drug and saying, Okay, we need it added to this existing charge. Yeah. We're just yeah. uh we're just you're, you're the ones that are future proofing. Food. I'm focusing on your words, yes. <laughs> Okay, all right, but the idea is that it just gives a platform forward for exactly how those things would be handled when a drug pops up. Instead of, uh, wow, it's popped up, we have to sit here and figure out all of the details on where it should be and how it fits into everything. Um, we already have a plan for that. We already have a way that they will be scheduled. Uh, and them. The no, 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 no. Classifying like, drugs, scheduling are, drugs means so people are aware of, uh, putting it into a class. So, like they say, class A narcotic, class Only B narcotic, other, class C narcotic. Uh, counterpoint to the whole scheduling idea mm -hmm. is that uh, typically officers uh, will scour reports for history of people being arrested with certain types of drugs. And if the charges change to felony possession of a schedule, whatever drug, uh, then they would be required to take probably three or four more steps to actually wow. identify the exact evidence. I'm not sure how big of a concern that is, but I know in the past, they often had tags, for example, like marijuana tracking and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think death by committee is a, a, a very real problem in the past PD in terms of deciding charges. I think Nakota could probably speak more of it if it's still a current problem. But I, I think anything that delays the investigative or, or, or the charging process uh, is, is, is not something we, we should be encouraging unless there is a, a very compelling reason behind it. Sure. I think if it was... Go ahead, sorry. So, shouldn't they be evaluating, mm -hmm. looking at the reports for the past charges to like look at the statute of limitations and see when they occurred anyway? Isn't that yeah, not really adding an extra step? Isn't that just enforcing the extra step well, that they should okay, be doing? Okay, but yeah. to do what you're doing, you would literally open yeah. up MDT, go advanced search, and there's a drop down for charge. So you would select like marijuana, and then you hit search, and then you just look at the dates for all the marijuana. Again, I'm not saying either way, mm -hmm. I'm not drawing a conclusion. Uh, I'm just asking questions for Nakota's sake to understand what the impact would be on people. Well, so if it was as I don't care either way. If it was as simple as like the firearms charge, where there's class two or class one, class two, class three, that would be one thing, right? Because it 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 clearly describes what each one of those things is. I think the issue is that while the drugs may be similar class, the denomination that there would make it a misdemeanor or a felony then creates a subset. Uh, unless each thing in the MDT was going to say class whatever drug 
uh, qualifies as these four, and then it literally has what falls in the misdemeanor amount of each of those. And so, so two on places to reference instead of one. Correct. And I mean, I, personally, I have no issue with that. Uh, I just... I'm I'm curious what the is that yeah, we don't create charges for you we create charges for Cornwood or whoever. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, is there like an issue right now that that this is tackling? Did you approve a loan drugs? company, Max? What'd you say? Did you approve a loan company? Absolutely not. no. Sonia Summers, a few seconds ago, oh C4 Loans, looking for investors for a loaning syndicate. Loans oh available no. for low-risk clientele. One thing, one, code, one, uh, one, sure one, nice. but, uh, they tried to do it for, like, transporting the drugs, I think it was. They tried to charge them for that, I don't know. What, for the prescription? Yeah, for the prescription drugs, yes. Jesus. They tried to charge Oh, them for I remember them that. For transporting yeah. prescription drugs, I do recall that. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was I, nice. uh, I think that might have been that before my time. Uh, it it wasn't. I don't know who the fuck was doing it, but uh, it was. It was what about like, Milton's mods? Random. Is that approved? No. Sort of uh, some sort of legislation slash punishment for people operating illegally as a business, uh, and we only need that now because it does, against all odds, slowly, 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 are we crawling toward the possibility of being able to have base functionality for approving and managing businesses in Los Santos? Can I get a round of applause, please? Clap, 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 Four months later, we have we are nearly upon the horizon, which means progress, hell you. Yeah, exactly. Which means we need to I will draft up a law before the next meeting and we will essentially say, hey, if you're not a business, guess what? If you're advertising yourself as a business, you're gonna get in trouble. The end. Uh we we had like a state announcement about that kind of like early on because mm -hmm. everyone was kind of trying to rush. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh but that was more like just to scare people to stop them from doing it for a little bit. But yeah, we need something official, I think. Make them follow the legislation, but on the other hand, even the people who are following the legislation don't have anywhere to call business, so I don't know. Yeah, sure I sure don't. I mean the, the uh the, the easy fix is there there is an unauthorized uh sales charge that kind of it's that definition right now. It's it's just like a, a piss well, right, misdemeanor, right, right, but right yeah. right now it's not illegal for them to do that. That's my point. Right. Yeah. Well. Oh, unauthorized it's sales. It's a citation. It, it technically yeah. is, but it means it's just the cost saying, of doing business, though. Right now. Well, that's okay. Right. So, I, as I continue, so what I'm saying is, you could simply retool that charge to either be like a zero zero discretion of the courts, make it a felony with ten grand. Like I, I don't know. There's there's a lot of things you you could cook up, but there there is technically a charge in all penal code that does apply that could be enforced right now. Yeah. I think that's something we can also like maybe address in the town halls um, to kind of get the word spread. It's not that willfully breaking the law. It's that they think that this is the best way to go about getting the um, I guess attention. Uh, towards what they want to achieve. We're we're, we're overthinking this. Okay. Mm -hmm. the point, they just don't want to pay the money. We we point, are overthinking this. Point blank, right now, it is not illegal for someone to operate a uh, in quotes business on Twitter and whatnot. It's not illegal. Okay. So next meeting, it's I'm gonna have something that makes commerce. it illegal for them to do it without a business license and. That's Sweet. that's and then we're gonna have a char a new charge associated with that as well, uh, operating Ooh. a business illegally or whatever. That's it. Boom, done. Ooh. No, no more. Like that's what has to happen, and it's gonna boom. Oh, I got one thing. Uh, do you guys? Does anybody know how uh, grime works exactly? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we have this whole thing about they need to keep their load under a certain like either the contract or the maximum way of the trailer. Uh, but uh, apparently there's runs that go to Polito. He didn't even have each contract anymore because they were all going to the same spot. It's like a depot drop off. And he had accepted multiple contracts. The easiest way, if we want to police commercial trucks and stuff, literally just do it weight based, not like this weird contract based shit. Like if they're overweight, that should be what we're aiming for. But not they like physically can't be overweight is the problem. Yeah. Well, we set the weight limit. And if they're over that weight limit, then they're overweight weight by package number i, I don't know how you, however you want to well phrase it. so right now i mean they're the for example the big trucks can hold five thousand kilos so what people are doing is just filling it up to like 4900 
So we set we we set a more reasonable weight limit. All right, what what would that be? Uh, I would say because I definitely did a couple of runs where I filled up my tiny little grime truck uh, to almost to five thousand. I, I feel like a a good either one point five or two thousand is probably like realistic. The claim yeah. made to me was that if they were to be limited to one contract at a time and having to go to the depot every time. They claimed that they would lose money in terms of repairs and gas. Yeah, they probably would. Especially, uh, what was the weight limit? Like 500 right now? 5,000 5, kilos. No, I mean, like, uh, I, like it, it, didn't we have, like, some legislation that said, like, hey, if you're over 500, then... No, it just says it, you can't exceed the contract or the trailer load. Yeah, but wasn't there uh, some kind of discrepancy on the contracts at the yeah, beginning? Yeah, which is why I'm bringing this back. Because yeah, okay. I've I've had further feedback that apparently it's still not really clear on how to enforce it. Bro, I'm going to be honest, just it, fucking get rid of this contract shit where it's like, hey, oh, do you only have food in your truck? Blah, blah. It doesn't fucking matter. It shouldn't matter. It, it, the the only thing that we should care about is are, is the, is their fucking monstrous truck so weighed down that they're going to be like a death machine on the highway. That's it. So, what, 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 uh, what weight limit? I would say two thousand. I think. I think hey, we can even. So I, think, a... I think that's. I think that's probably a little low because I think, from what I've heard, the contracts for the bigger trucks can be up to twelve hundred. So maybe like just, like just per contract. So like twenty two point four k. Yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to I. You know, uh, you guys know Marlo Stanfield. Yeah, oh, yes. he, 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 he's, he's the grime king. I'll call him after this meeting. Right, I'll ask him. Info from him and let's figure it out. Okay, um, I don't have anything to present. I'm kind of in a little bit of a writer's block right now. Well, we also did that pump out a fuck ton of pieces yeah. of legislation. True. Oh, absolutely. We've got There's only so many things that need to be regulated, to be honest. Yep, true. True. I just gonna, I'm we're gonna... at like, what, 30, 30 something things or some shit? Yeah, I'm going to do some town halls and kind of figure out where everyone's at.